We'll start by creating a new Amplify project by running Amplify init. Next, we'll add authentication by running Amplify Add Auth. Here, we'll choose the default configuration, allowing users to sign in with their username. We're adding authentication so we can test authorization rules against our GraphQL API. We'll create the GraphQL API by running Amplify Add API. When prompted for a guided schema creation, we'll choose Yes and then Single Object with Fields as the starter project. This will start us off with the basic to-do application with an ID, name, and description field within the to-do type. To test the API, we can run Amplify Mock API. The CLI will run GraphQL code generation, so you can also test the API out from your client application. Once the endpoint is up and running, we can now test it out. We'll first create a couple of to-dos by running the create to-do mutation. Next, we'll fetch a list of to-dos by running the list to-dos query. We can also get a single to-do by ID by running get to-do. For our next API, I'll open the GraphQL Recipes blog post and look for the Events app. We'll save the schema and then run Amplify Mock API. To test this out, we'll create a couple of events by running the create event mutation. To query for the events, we'll run the list events query. Here, we'll notice that the events come back, but they're not in any particular order. To get the events by date, we can run the events by date query. The next schema that we'll test out is for a conference app. We'll save the schema and then run Amplify Mock API. Next, we'll test this out by trying to create a new talk. We'll notice that we get an unauthorized exception because only an admin can create a talk. To simulate an admin, we'll open the Auth options and add us to the admin group.
Now the mutation is successful. To query for all of the talks, we can run the list talks query. This query returns a list of talks as expected. 